Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be discussing how to replace your coolant temperature slash pressure sensor on a 2005 to 2010 Jeep Grand Cherokee or Commander. This is for the 3.7 liter V6 engine only. So this also applies to the older Liberties and the Dodge Nitros. So I stopped at my friend's driveway and was talking to him while sitting in the car running. I was supposed to be just dropping something off and uh, I looked down at my dash and my temperature gauge was slowly rising. Now I have a 180 thermostat and I have an upgraded radiator. So my Jeep runs fairly cold. It's a 180 thermostat and I think it runs somewhere about 175, 170, which is extremely low compared to what stock usually runs at. Uh, so I just saw the, the temp sensor was way higher than it should have been. And as I was sitting there talking to him, it just slowly crept higher and higher and higher. I could hear my fan running. I knew that I hadn't had any other previous problems with the, uh, the radiator or the coolant overheating. So what I did was I turned the Jeep off, went over and popped the hood. And once I popped the hood, there's quite a few telltale signs you can look for to see if your vehicle is over, obviously if, it's, if it actually is overheating. Uh, so the first thing I did was I went over to my coolant reservoir. I checked to make sure it's at a good level. You can see there's a full level on the back somewhere. Maybe it's on the front. It might actually be that line right there is the full level. I might need to add some. I'll have to check on that later. But anyways, I popped this open, looked in there. Obviously it has not disappeared. It's still plenty of it in there. Uh, you know, it wasn't boiling, didn't look oh, it was super hot. So I reached down here and where the fluid is, you can touch the fluid and feel how warm it is. I just drove to this spot and it was, it's slightly warm, but I would say probably about 95 degrees is what I would guess, just off feeling through plastic. There's actually the full line right there on the side. So you can see I am indeed low. I'm at the ad line actually. So it's good that I'm making this video to see that because I did not notice when we were checking before. So I checked that. And uh, from those signs, it seemed good. I knew that my fan was running. I know that I don't have any like random dirt clogged in my radiator from recently. So what I did was I came over here to the radiator hose. This is the hose that comes out of the engine uh, into your radiator to then have the air flow through it to cool down. And as you can see, I just drove this vehicle and I can clearly touch this. It is definitely hot to the touch but it is not a, uh, you know, a crazy temperature degree like it was reading. So the next step I went to was I went over to my vehicle and I tried to start it again and I had some problems. I had a extremely, extremely rough idle and I had to give it gas to start it. So I did that just to get it up and running to try to diagnose uh, these issues further. And then as I sat there and watched, the temperature gauge slowly rose higher and higher and higher. And as it was rising higher, I had my friend looking through the window to see uh, how high the temperature gauge was rising. And I had my hand on the radiator hose here. And the radiator hose was not getting any warmer as the temperature gauge kept rising. There was no visible issues through the system that I could see or tell. Uh, so we diagnosed it as it was a bad coolant temperature sensor, which in case you didn't know, it is extremely simple to find. It is that one right there with the red clip. It is right there. So it's right smack dab in the middle, super easy to replace. So the first thing I said was let's just go get another sensor, replace it and see what it does. Went to Advanced Auto, uh, bought the sensor. The sensor was $30, keep that in mind. Uh, if you look on Rock Auto, you can get one for about $3. So it might be something you want to do as preventative maintenance because it cost me 10 times the amount to do it at a later date when I sure should have known that on a 225,000 mile engine, some of the sensors are going to go bad and it's obviously way cheaper to buy them uh, beforehand until it actually does go bad. So what you do is you reach in here and there is a clip down here on, uh, it was on this side for me, so towards the alternator. And I took a screwdriver down here and pushed the clip in and then at the same time, I had a pair of pliers and reached in there and pulled the plug out. So the whole plug un unattaches from the top and then the sensor goes uh, obviously down on the bottom end. And then you take a deep well, 19 millimeter socket, uh, a, like I said, deep well so it's longer, pop that bad boy on top and then just unloosen it with a ratchet and it'll come right on out. You will hear a hiss, or at least I heard a hiss from the pressure releasing but there was no coolant that came out, uh, nothing like that. And this was on a, a quite a hot engine as well. 
So keep that in mind if you are doing it on a hot engine, everything down here is hot. I had some nice sturdy gloves on with my hands uh, while I was reaching in there because I tried without it. I was bumping my hands into hot things and I was not having a good time changing them. So uh, untwist that, take it out, uh, put your new one in that you went and got from the parts store. Uh, make sure it has uh, like, I wanna say like thread locker or sealant already on the threads. You'll be able to see it, it's just on like the top part. That's obviously to seal so the coolant, once it gets pressurized in the system, doesn't come back out. Uh, so just do that, change it in and out, snap the clip back on and you're good to go. That was all that I did. And then, uh, so what we predicted or diagnosed from the, uh, the rough idle and the, the rough start was that the computer must have been sensing that the temperature was overheating. Therefore, it was reluctant to start the motor because it was uh, trying to protect itself, essentially. That's what we figured it was doing. We really uh, were not 100% sure if that's why it did that. I've, I've never had any... Uh, I've never had a sensor like that go bad or go through that situation. So I'll know for a future reference on another vehicle if that ever happens. But hopefully you guys can learn from that. So I could imagine if, like, I would have never noticed that the, uh, the temperature gauge was rising because I didn't have any other symptoms from it. I didn't have any lights or anything on my dash. So if you were to start your vehicle and it just starts, it's, it's like a rough start and a rough idle. I feel like there's a lot of things that could be wrong uh, if you do have that happen, but I would keep in mind that it could possibly be your coolant temperature sensor So I hope you guys learned anything from this I'll try to do the step step-by-step -step directions of removing and installing down in the comments below so you can uh, Read through all those steps as you're doing it yourself. I even looked up a YouTube video uh, There's another one that some guy did that was time-lapse where he didn't really talk about it specifically So I figured I would make one where I talk about it specifically what exactly you need to do uh, some of the symptoms that you'll see beforehand and know you need to replace it and then how to replace it. If you guys learned anything from this video, make sure to drop a like button, subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank yeah. you so much for watching. So you'll find what you're looking for when you stop looking. All of your exes were lessons in. We'll talk about them again. You keep on settling. Wonder if love is a pain or the medicine. You